I want to tell you, having gone to these, who, who in here has been to more than 10 DAV national conventions? Who's been to more than 15? Keep them up. Who's been to more than 20? That, there's some people who've been to a lot of these conventions, and I know a lot of you have been in the five, you know, seen them for five years or whatever, but um, I just, on be, as someone who's been working with this stuff for a long time, I want to just tell you how great I think our communications department has done to set this stuff up and the work that they've done. Can you give them a round of applause? I was on my way in, and I saw these banners up and, and you know, in the street. Has, have you guys seen the banners out for DAV? They got the nice QR code out there. Um, in the airport, I saw public service announcements, and it just reminds me how there's so many talented people who are dedicating their time to honoring veterans. Um, but what we're doing there is it, it's all strategic, and if you've been participating in convention, which everyone who wasn't hung over for two and a half days has been doing, if you've been participating in convention, you're absorbing DAV. Visually, you're absorbing it. You're absorbing it through words. You're learning talking points and ways to talk to the public. So when it comes to media relations, which is the topic I'm going to talk about most today, I just want to say we have a lot of great content. And I, I say this every time, and I, I hope I'm stepping on Rob because he probably doesn't have enough time and I'm stealing some of his. But um, what, if you read the magazine, if you go to an event like this and you just listen, you learn how you need to communicate the, the voluntary services department for DAV. You learn how to communicate recruiting. There's a reason why you've seen that win, 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 come to Las Vegas thing 50 times probably uh, since you've been here. It's because we want your recruiting people. But it's, it's re there's a certain amount of repetition, but also a ton of creativity. And I'm so proud of what's going on all the time. But I want you to realize that you are, in fact, being indoctrinated constantly by DAV through these very manipulative people up here, and they make us love DAV, and they make our spouses hate us for how much time we spend going above and beyond for our fellow veterans, but it's a good thing in the end. Who in here knows who, who is allowed to talk to the media? If you are allowed to talk to the media representing DAV, and I hope everyone up here raises their hands, please raise your hand right now. That's awesome. If your hand is not up, it should be. Um, everyone, if you're representing DAV, you are authorized to speak to the media. You cannot speak on behalf of your commander, but you can speak as a DAV member, and you should mention you're a DAV member. All news is local, right? When we talk about legislation, we always talk about how all news is local. Your ability to project DAV in your communities can sh swing the dial on legislation. It can, it can change how many volunteers we get at DAV. It can influence how many people show up to meetings, so it's all important. Your media outreach brings in attention. It brings in people. They start looking you up once you're in, in the media. And it's, it's honestly, I can't think of a time where it's ever been easier because there's so much more momentum behind DAV right now. I think we've had, how many media hits have we had since we've been here, Rob? I think we've had seven local media hits since we've been here. And that's without whatever else is going to happen with Sinise. Think of that. I mean, it is usually pulling teeth to go to a convention and be able to get a single media hit from local media because you're in Orlando. They cover conventions all the time. Um, but we're doing a good job and our reputation's out there and people see the value of what we're doing here. It's not a vacation. Um, it is a, it's, this is all strategy. It's about learning how to be a better DAV le leader. And you are authorized to speak to the media. I don't want to scare anyone off, but has anyone heard this quote before? People think sometimes that the media is evil, but they're only as evil as you allow them to be. They're not evil. I'm just kidding. They're not evil. Um, I asked before, and I skipped my slide there, but who is authorized to speak to the media? It's, uh, I should have started with a better joke and, and done something more there. Um, but when, when you're talking to the media, you, I think people in the military have this inherent distrust that's based on years of veterans being portrayed poorly in the, in the media. Um, it's a little bit different right now. The people who are covering DAV stories right now are doing positive stories, and when, when these broadcast stations who, let's be honest, they're on the line. Broadcasting, traditional broadcasting, we're involved in that community too. It's, it's on the line. They need to show a public service in their communities. They need to show that they're engaging the public. It helps them with their advertising. Um, it helps them get eyeballs. Local news is where most of the money's made for, for local stations nowadays. And we got to support them, and we got to give them reasons to come out and engage with DAV. So you are authorized to do it. And in a sense, 
since you came to this seminar, you're either wasting DAV's time or you're obligated to do it now, so you're welcome. A little Catholic guilt for all of you. You are all now authorized and required to reach out to the media four to five times a year minimum to support local activities. Um, thank you very much, and I think that's it, Rob. No, I'm just kidding. We got a little bit more. Um, how do you prepare for a media interview? Um, that is one of the harder things, right? How do you get ready? What are you going to do? Well, the first thing you do, media relations is customer service. If you're engaging the media or if you're responding to the media, you are right now locked in a customer service battle. If you can show that member of the media that you can provide someone who will answer their interview and be there on time and show up prepared and give them some good stuff, they're going to come back to you and back to you and back to you. And we see people where they have relationships. We're seeing chapters who have full-blown relationships with broadcast outlets, sometimes regional broadcast outlets. And they're on the radio two or three times a week just talking about DAV. It's possible to develop that kind of relationship, but you've got to show up. You've got to do the work. You've got to be ready to do it. Um, how do you do that? You read DAV magazine. You look at stories that are going on nationally, and you say, what's locally? You look at your activities. What do you need to project? How can media relations affect your ability to operate as a charity? You need people to show up to your meetings. Are you doing the work? Are you telling them about the meetings? What are you doing to get them there? If you're not doing anything and then you just expect more people can show up, um, I recommend that you take them, you know, maybe put something out for putt-putt golf or something interesting that they'd want to be doing instead of um, going to a meeting unless they understand the value of what's going on there. How many of you need volunteer drivers? How many of you work with volunteer drivers or have volunteer, been a volunteer driver? So you already know your program. You know that aspect of DAV probably as well as anybody. If you reached out to your local media right now and said, I would like to talk to someone about getting more volunteer drivers and this is the impact it could have in our community, you're, you will be surprised because every time that we've attempted to do that on a national level in select markets, we've had a lot of success with it and that falls to Rob and his team. Um, back to media relations, let's move ahead. Here are three tools that are available to all of you that can prepare you for just about any media interview that you're going to do on behalf of DAV. You have the publicity guide. How many of you are familiar with that? How many of you have ever sent or, or uh, distributed a press release on behalf of DAV? The template is there. You can do it. It's accessible to you. Just get the book, read it, check it out, and if you have any problems, call Rob and make him do all of the work for you. That's Rob Lewis over here. I'll give out his personal and home phone numbers later on. Um, how to recruit volunteer drivers. There's an entire resource. That, Rob just told me my time's coming up, and I've known him long enough to know that's problematic for me. I'm going to maybe leave right after I'm done here. How to recruit volunteer drivers. How many of you are familiar with that resource? Maybe not as many, and that's fine, but that resource will tell you how to get volunteer drivers, and if you need help beyond that, please ask because it's there. The trouble that you would get into if you decide to represent DAV is if you show up at a political rally doing the kinds of stuff that are prohibited in the election do's and don'ts. It's when you're talking about, you're talking on behalf of a partisan issue or on behalf of a candidate in a way that isn't, that uh, shows partisanship, which is against the rules for DAV. And also, if you're advocating for something that isn't covered as part of a DAV resolution legislatively, you can go out of bounds. But be honest, let's be honest, when you're talking about volunteer drivers, getting people to a, a homeless stand down or a function that you're holding or a welcome home some, uh, ceremony or something like that, these, you're not going to run into trouble. Let's be honest, some of us are a little scared to deal with the media. I am. I make Rob do all the interviews that I don't want to do. Some of us, it's, it's a little unnerving, but if you put yourself in the position of saying, this is a service that I'm doing for DAV, um, you, you give yourself a little... Uh, little bit of a leeway so that you can be a little bit of a, someone who's willing to go on camera. Um, the other thing, if you're looking for these resources, member resources, top right corner of the website, the most important one um, for the flag, please get in there and use them. It's a great new website. Um, okay, let's talk about how do you engage the media now. Uh, easiest thing to do, one of the things I recommend is look for stories that you see that they're doing about any patriotic thing under the sun. They're doing something on a, a veteran's family who's in need of something. Maybe you reach out to that veteran, and then maybe you follow up with the media and say, I saw the story that you did on X. It was great. DAV's right here in your community. These are some programs we're doing. If you're ever willing to help us out, we think that what you do could make an impact in our mission and help more local veterans. 
Think about the, the, you just packaged the entire thing for them. You gave them the occasion, the reason. Uh, maybe they won't use you. Maybe they will. Maybe they'll call you sometime and ask you a question about something for background even. That happens to us a lot, and we help them. Even if DAV is not going to get mentioned, we help them because they're going to come back to us later on and mention us, and they're going to be someone we can work with when they realize we didn't get anything out of the deal. But, well, I mean, it's, it's a service all the time, whatever we're doing. But when we didn't get recognized, when they call us Disabled Veterans of America and we call them up to correct it, they're more likely to do so. Um, so, but getting in there, the other thing that you can do is, is get a little bit creative with what you're trying to do. Web, um, all these stations have websites. Here's one locally. Share, send us your story idea. They would rather probably see that than any channel that you could send a, a news release from because this goes all to the same place in their office. This is going to be organize, organized among the deck of other stories that they're working on, and you're already in the queue for them if you use something like this. Here's another one. You're holding an event. Well, why not go to your local events calendar? Here's one in Cincinnati. Easy enough. Sometimes you have to register for an account. As we mentioned before, you're authorized and obligated to do so, along with sending four to five news releases every year. You've all made that promise, and we appreciate it. Your fellow veterans will be let down if you don't do that at this point. Um, get creative as you go. Here's some phone numbers. Guess what? You can call the media. Someone will pick up the phone, and you can say to them, hey, I got something going on, and it's really great. And I'll be really quick with you and not annoy the crap out of you if you just listen and come out and cover this story for us. And then tell them you know their phone number and you'll call them five to six times a year. And like I said before, it's about building relationships. It's about showing up and doing a little bit of the work. It's about watching DAV videos and being able to respond. And then if you're not willing to do that or you don't have the time to do that, harassing the communications department to do a lot of that work for you. If you're good at that, you will succeed in media relations. Um, one other thing, and I mentioned this briefly before, radio is awesome. Radio can help you, I mean, radio stations have hours and hours to fill every day and they're terrified of how they're going to be able to do that and no matter how you look, you can succeed in radio. Um, one final note, um, when something bad happens, when something happens, a car wreck, car wrecks happen. Bad things happen. If you had a chapter that someone lost their mind for whatever reason, or a complaint or something like that, or, or some, some question about how you're spending money, those are all called crises. Crisis communications is something that's like a specialty in college. Um, if, if you're in a mode where, where something bad's going to happen, definitely reach out to the national organization. We can help you get ahead of things. We can help you prepare for that. Um, it doesn't mean necessarily that you're going to get a national spokesperson to take over the show, or we're not, we're not interested in that, but we're going to help you through something like that, so it's very important that you know that. And that's all I have. I'm going to turn it over to Rob. Thank you so much, Dan. Everybody get everything he says? I know he talks fast, but look, take, take notes. Go back and watch the videos uh, that we'll put of this presentation on there because, I, you know, I, I've, I've known Dan uh, for 30 years uh, next year. And actually, um, I made a little slide there. If you can see, that's the two of us uh, at the Defense Information School uh, learning broadcast journalism back in 1995. Uh, that's Dan on the left and, and me on the right. I had a neck like Henry Rollins back in the day. I had a, I had a thick neck back in the day. Uh, the first time anyone here has seen my chin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dan, as long as I've known Dan, uh, he's been not only a masterful, masterful storyteller, uh, but someone who understands the way things connect uh, at, at the big picture level um, as much as anybody uh, in this organization in the last uh, 15 years as we've gone through rebranding and really modernized uh, the look and feel and the way we talk about this organization. Dan has been spearheading those efforts. So. Uh, again, another round of applause for Dan. I appreciate that. But it, you know, Dan, what he knows and what he was what he was getting at there was was there are channels for our stories, right? There are there are people out there who want to tell our story, and uh, 
whether it's you know internal, external. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the the internal uh, here at first. You know the way that that our department, the professionals uh, at DAV National and Washington headquarters, uh, how we tell your stories. It still it all comes back uh, to your stories. Um, what what makes them resonate? What makes them uh, you know get get picked up elsewhere uh, is what you offer, what all of you bring to the table, uh, what you're doing as departments, as chapters, as individual members. Uh, you know, you heard Barry say uh, in his presentation, his report uh, on Saturday, that it, it gives hope, that it inspires your fellow veterans. I think that it goes beyond inspiring your fellow veterans. I think it gives hope to our, our nation in general, uh, to know uh, that we have these men and women out there uh, who have gone through uh, a struggle, who have come out the other side, uh, and who have this story to tell uh, that can, can, can speak to the best of us, right, as Americans. Uh, you heard Cody talk about how we can connect generations and how we can propel innovation. Uh, and you heard Randy uh, talk about how we can be a unified force uh, for a divided country. And uh, I know that's quite a set of expectations to put on all of your back. But uh, you know you're here for it, and Dan volunteered you for a lot of things uh, a couple minutes ago, uh, and I'm going to volunteer you for that now, for that that responsibility. So you know, thanks for for enlisting again, I guess. Uh, National Communications Department, made up of about 15 professionals, but you know, 15 is is just a number. Uh, what that what they actually do, what these men and women do on your behalf, on our behalf, each and every day. Uh, you can see the kind of the list of things there, like the, the branding, the public perception, the magazine, the website. We'll get into that in a second. In case you're wondering why I have notes, by the way, I rolled over on my glasses. I fell asleep with them on last night. And I'm basically like Velma up here, so I was worried that I was going to need them, but I think I can, can make it here. But uh, I, you know, what you, you know the kind of things that we do, right? You know the magazine, you know the website, you know social media. But if you, if you realize that all the things that you're seeing here, hundreds of, of pieces of of creative collateral, we help with speeches, the videos that you've seen, uh, more than 100 at least individual assignments for 15 people uh, is I think pretty incredible. Uh, and you multiply that out over winter sports clinics, golf clinic, uh, midwinter, all these different e events uh, in between. You know, I'm, I'm not bragging, but I, I would put them up you know, in Thermopylae against what happened there any day. These guys hold a line uh, and, and put together an incredible amount of, of product each and every day. And we got some of them, we got, obviously I have Brian Buckwalter uh, here to my right and then Kevin Miller on our team. If I could have my communications team uh, stand up, the, the folks that we have here, they weren't ready for this. They got to put down their lattes. And, and you know, that's, that's the good, but sometimes, uh, when you're managing creatives, I, I never expected this. You know, I used to be uh, just a person who created stories. I wrote stories, I helped produce videos, shot, shot photos, uh, wrote speeches, but uh, actually managing these folks, and some of them are, are you know, kind of genius level. Uh, there's days when, you know, you'll get things that you don't expect. Uh, Dan and I, and uh, we were working with Cody uh, on uh, his, his presentation, his report to, to the convention. Uh, on you know a couple of days ago, about a week ago, and uh, he, some of you saw if you were if you if you saw Cody's uh, presentation, you saw that he had a UFC video uh, in there, and, and I apologize if you don't like watching guys getting hit in the face, but you know it's a it's a pretty pretty grueling sport, but it's good to see DAV's logo on that mat. It's a, it's big with younger veterans. Uh, uh, it, it really does carries a lot of water for us, but. At first, we had audio on the video, and you know, Cody had the talk over top of it. And he came back, and he's like, you know, maybe we take the audio out, and I'll just talk over it, and, you know, kind of narrate what's going on. And I don't, he, you know, he made the joke about how he's not sure if he should watch the guy getting punched in the face or be happy that he sees Dav's name on the mat right next to the concussed person laying down there. Uh, and so. Uh, Kevin Kirkendall, uh, who's, who's sitting out here in the audience, I, I reached out, said, you know, Cody wants to take the audio of that, and he says, now, are, are you sure? Because I've, I've got this idea. Let me see if I can cue this up for us. So... Sometimes, yeah, Kevin, yeah, let's give a hand for Kevin Kirkendall, everybody. 
probably three or four of those a week that I get, uh, honestly. But no, they're, they're, again, an incredible group. Uh, they're dedicated. They're dedicated uh, to you, uh, to telling your stories, uh, to getting it right. Uh, and all the work uh, that, that we do, of course, it, it, most of it starts out uh, in DAV Magazine. It's still the driver of our editorial production. Uh, most of our products are stories, are social. Uh, everything you see on the website are videos. Uh, they begin as or uh, are a part of uh, magazine coverage. Um, it's a calling card at VA hospitals. Uh, those of you who go to appointments at VA, you hopefully see DAV Magazine uh, in the VA. Um, it's, it's, a lot of times it's the first impression that folks have. We always we try to, to do inter interesting things with the cover. Uh, we always try to make things that would, you know, why would I pick up this over Field and Stream or Sports Illustrated or whatever else might be there. So. Uh, and then, of course, the next stop is uh, the, the magazine ends up uh, on the website, uh, and then the you know the web and, and and social, of course, allow for a more more timely distribution. We have over four million visitors who come to our website uh, every year. Again, a lot of those people are just learning about the organization. Uh, we did a redesign about a year and a half ago now uh, to make it more easy to to access um, information for folks who don't know our organization, right, who don't know DAV. Uh, we still have the member section for folks who do, the resources that Dan was talking about before. That's incredibly important. You should obviously definitely avail yourself of that. But understand that uh, some of what we did in that redesign was made for audiences uh, external to us, right? Veterans who are coming to us for the first time, supporters who want to come in and help us. How, you know, how do we make it uh, accurate, uh, useful to our members, but also uh, inviting to folks who don't know DAV and don't know our story. And I think we've done a pretty good job there. And of course, next we have social media. Uh, you know, Facebook, I, I, I'll kill, I don't know. I'm never going to stop calling it Twitter. I'm sorry. You guys want to call it X, you guys go ahead. Uh, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube, Threads, and Twitch. And we'll talk, uh, Kevin Miller will talk about Twitch here in a second. It's kind of social media, but kind of not. Obviously, streaming gaming is a, is a different, different world. Uh, you know, we have this expectation of what social media is, which is, you know, I, I used to love to go on, so on Facebook and, and look at my friends who I haven't seen in 15 years, like to look at their kids and, you know, I wonder what they're, you know, kids playing t-ball and here's what they're doing professionally and here's their vacation photos. Uh, instead, what we end up doing is, is uh, unfortunately, all too often, uh, is arguing and, and looking for division and, and social media uh, rewards that. The algorithms uh, will reward controversy will reward anger and vitriol because more people will, will react to it, right? Uh, in some ways, uh, social media has exposed, uh, I think the, the worst of us has held up a mirror to kind of the worst version of ourselves. Um, it's an incredible tool when used right. If you can use it dispassionately, if you can use it within the guidelines of the organization, uh, which we provide uh, uh, in our member resources, then it, then it, it is, everything that we dreamed that it could be. It's, it's what's on the left there, right? It's the, the, you know, sharing information about our chapters, information about what we're doing, inviting people into the organization. Uh, we, a couple of years, a year ago, we created a, uh, a fake uh, DAV uh, Facebook account for a chapter. I'm sorry if you're from Indiana. We just chose, we had to choose a state, so we chose uh, Narnia, Indiana. Uh, and, you know, you can see some of the things that are immediately wrong. If you're running a social media page, for your chapter or for your department, don't do this, right? No, nothing political. Don't leave all your about blanks. There's no, there's no, there's politics, there's, there's no logo. I don't see DAV logo, it's the old logo. I'm sorry, we do have DAV logo, but it's the old logo, the red, white, and blue. We love it, we miss it, but I, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, but we, we, we have to, to upgrade that brand. Um, and we still see that, that old logo out there sometimes, the old taglines. Uh, there's no contact information. Uh, and, and know nothing about the website. So make sure that you're, you're abiding by the, the best practices, the best standards, and we provide those to you. Again, here's, here's some more. Uh, you know, no, no uh, stuff about funding for another organization, no controversial political messages, uh, you know, no news that has, I, I see it's got, it's a veteran story, but it's got nothing to do with, with our organization, right? We, we need to keep narrowly focused. The easiest thing to do is to share what is being shared by Michael Stegner. Can you raise your hand over here? If you guys want to talk to, about social media, you can talk to this gentleman right here. Michael, uh, he'll, he'll be happy. He'll, he'll talk your ear off about social strategy uh, and in the best ways, best practices. 
again, ways to get out there, to use these tools effectively, uh, and to not get caught up uh, in anything that, that the organization shouldn't be caught up in. And next, I'm gonna turn the, the, the mic over to uh, Kevin Miller, who's gonna talk to us about Twitch. Thank you, Rob. So besides being um, the communications director, I'm based out of the Washington headquarters. I'm also a uh, chapter commander in uh, chapter four in Silver Spring. So I know uh, I'm trying to add another tool to you know your guys' arsenal and our arsenal here at DAV. Is, that's all it is. It's just another outreach tool. I'm just going to play a quick 60-second video that gives you an overview before we go into a little bit further details in this. All right, well, technical difficulties. Sorry about that, folks. Anyways, so Twitch is actually an Amazon product. So if it, for most people didn't know, um, so if you do have an Amazon Prime account, you can actually connect it to Twitch. Uh, the reason why we're getting on Twitch, it's uh, the younger generations are, you know, using streaming services like Twitch, YouTube, TikTok, and the sorts as their source of getting information, um, whether it's news or information just uh, or content in their daily lives. So besides, you know, all the other multimedia that, you know, Dan and Rob both talked about, we're trying to, you know, continue to progress with the future, continue to be forward early adopters with this. And uh, part of that is, uh, you know, gaming and live streaming. So on Twitch, most people do associate it with gaming, but it's far more than that. A lot of people are live streaming on it, and we're going to do a lot of things with that um, here in the coming year. Earlier this year, you might have seen on our social media channels, we did um, an early pilot with uh, three uh, Twitch partners and influencers. Um, these uh, folks had, um, between each one of them, had about a quarter million followers. And so they were getting new outlets and demographics and spreading the word about DAV's programs and services. Two of the three were veterans themselves, and a third was actually very um, involved in the military veteran community through his family. And we've had great results um, within that uh, campaign that ran in January and February. And as you can see from those numbers, these are you know almost 100,000 video views, six million impressions, and two million video views. And I know these numbers are great and they complement our PSAs, but the biggest, most exciting things, these are new demographics of folks that traditionally associate DAV with you know a 100 plus year organization, maybe associated us with the bars and whatnot. And so we're creating spaces where veterans are already at, trying to complement them and inform them about what we do well. We want to combat lots of things online, like you know the unaccredited reps and claim sharks who are trying to put undue influence and peddle that online. So we're creating our presence on the space so we can give them our subject matter authority and expertise within the matter. And we can do things very uh, quickly um, in our Washington studio, uh, new uh, headquarters. We've been uh, built out a full-fledged uh, studio broadcasting. So we can do new uh, legislative and policy updates to complement our other gaming activities and continue to tap into new audiences. We are very close to VA central office and got a lot of great partnerships and also elected officials. So we're gonna bring you new content that we haven't had before and uh, be able to disperse that, not just on Twitch, but also through all our channels. So to continue to hit folks where they are. Our main, our main objective is, is uh, to always meet veterans and families where they are and connect them with the representation. So far, we've already, we're have already we doing weekly gaming streams so far. Um, with that, we've already uh, referred a half a dozen veterans to representation um, throughout, uh, throughout the country. These folks are under, from underrepresented populations who most likely would have never connected with a VA rep for their benefits. And so we're connecting with folks that are uh, younger and sooner and connecting them into VA healthcare and into their benefits and representation. And with that, we can also bring them into the, uh, the fold with other programs like our voluntary services, our entrepreneurship program, our employment program, and then, of course, bring them in the fold as members. And so that's the most important part. And so also with those efforts, we're also collaborating with VA and lots of community partners. We are a part of the VA Gaming War Room, which has our organizations across the US who have gaming affiliations or who are using gaming to connect with veterans and their families. 
The VA recently announced also earlier this month that they are going to introduce eSports and adaptive gaming at VA events. Last week, they brought it to the wheelchair games in New Orleans and started, and they have lots of adaptive equipment that the VA can provide um, veterans who are under their care. So it doesn't matter if you have physical disabilities, visual disabilities, audio disabilities, the VA can provide equipment to those who want to participate. And so we're gonna make sure we're gonna continue to bring content and let our veterans and members know how they can access this technology and equipment through VA care. And then later next year, the VA will also be producing a gaming summit that will be heavily involved with uh, the VA Innovation Department to continue to shape uh, and move things forward uh, with the technology and also on the legislative level. And so the ways you can help is, of course, is by following us on Twitch, just like most of our other uh, tags, is we're at DAAVHQ. You can watch our broadcasts. You do not need an account, but if you do have an account you and an Amazon Prime membership, you can sub subscribe. Subscribing is free through an Amazon Prime membership, and it does actually provide monetary support to DAV and our channel. Make sure to let others know about our broadcasts as well. That's the most important part is to continue to expand on this initiative in the future. And also, what we would like to do is develop um, a whole bench of streamers. So if you do know members within your chapters that are gaming and streaming on Twitch or on YouTube, get a hold of me at gaming at DAV.org, and I would like to see if we can bring them into the fold and have them be streamers and publicizing all the great work you guys are doing for DAV in your communities. Thank you. I knew I should have kept playing video games as a kid. Oh, I don't know why I stopped at Pac-Man, but um, my thumbs just quit developing after that. And now I'm, now I'm behind. Thank God we have uh, guys like Kevin Miller on our team uh, who are out there leading the way, right? Uh, so, you know, it, Twitch is, is, a, is a channel. Uh, it is exciting. Uh, it is going to build, you know, some of these numbers uh, right now, we've already crossed over the threshold uh, to where uh, we can accept donations on Twitch. I mean, you have to have a certain number of followers. Uh, we've crossed that threshold, so I'm sure uh, we'll, we'll be looking at different ways uh, to bring Twitch, to bring streaming uh, to the local level, to our departments, to our chapters, uh, to get you involved, to provide tools so that you can can do some of these things for yourselves with our help. We, we know that we have a lot of departments out there already who are doing some incredible work uh, in this realm. And we're watching you, as always. We're learning uh, from, our, from our members uh, and, and seeing what they're doing. Uh, and and um, it's really, I know that, that Kevin uh, keeps an eye on, on that. And it's been inspirational for us. It's been educational for us uh, to see how we can, can uh, develop our own best practices around the work you're doing. So thank you so much for that. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about uh, are our PSAs. Uh, public service announcements. Uh, it, this Dan mentioned uh, before, you know, half of this equation at least, which is being active, being uh, having connections with your local news stations, local media outlets, newspapers, radio. Um, that's half of this, you know, half of this equation is ensuring uh, that you're developing these relationships, right? Uh, they will also play our PSAs if they know that you're active in the local community. And when they see our PSAs, that gives more brand recognition uh, for them to provide more coverage. So it's a, it's a, it's a, a symbiotic, uh, uh, a cyclical relationship, uh, and each feeds off, uh, off of the other. And this is a, you know, an important slide uh, to, to take with you. Um, you know, uh, it's, it's uh, the relationship between PSAs, enhanced brand, brand recognition, uh, and earned media. Uh, most of you have heard uh, about our Victories for Veterans PSA campaign. Uh, how many of you have actually seen uh, either on television or uh, out of home billboards uh, with our with our PSAs? Good, I love to see that, right? And, and I'm, I'll get to some numbers that will will uh, underscore that here in a second. Uh, but just for those of you who don't, who are maybe not not might not be aware of it, uh, these are stories uh, that form the backbone of our greatest outreach success. Uh, Victories for Veterans theme PSAs tell the story of better, uh, victories of wounded, ill, and injured veterans in order to put a face on the vast services uh, that we provide. Uh, these are PSAs, right? These are not, uh, not commercials. They are not, uh, just, no, there's no fundraising. 
these are, this is donated media to our organization. We provide creative, we send it out to stations, or in some cases, uh, we have uh, you as ambassadors uh, reaching out to uh, radio, television, uh, newspapers, uh, billboard owners uh, in your, in your uh, home states, hometowns. And uh, it's not, again, it can't raise funds. Uh, it can't, you can't add something to it. You know, you can't, we can't just, you know, chop up our, our PSA and then add, come to, you know, our, our local chapter meeting. I know we've had people who have asked for that. We'll provide you with the B-roll that we use for all of our PSAs. You guys can, can, can use and, and develop it uh, for those purposes, for your local purposes, just like we'd provide you with, with photographs or with templates for press releases that Dan says I'm going to be writing here for you in the next couple of weeks. Uh, but these PSAs are, are packaged uh, in order to uh, be tracked, in order to, because there's a, there's a value to that, to the organization uh, at every level. Uh, we have 60, 30, uh, 15 second television, 60 and 30 on radio. Uh, the latest PSA creative that we have uh, features Latoya Lucas, Michael Naranjo, and Adam Alexander. Uh, we are actually very close, uh, and the next time I, I step behind a microphone in front of a group of, of DAV members like this, probably be at midwinter, uh, and we will have new PSA creative at that time, uh, and we're very excited. We're, we're really close to getting that, that done, uh, but right now, this is the, the latest uh, that we have, and I want to show you uh, one of our PSAs. While serving in Vietnam, a grenade took my ability to see. Today, I'm a sculptor creating new visions. Now, my fingers are my eyes. As a veteran, I know the challenges of life can be great. In my art, turning a lump of clay into something beautiful, that means a lot to me. Life is like that. We each must use what we can to make things better. DAV helps veterans like Michael get the benefits they've earned. They help more than a million veterans every year in life-changing ways. Now, I show others how they can create something with their own hands. With support from DAV, more veterans can shape their lives into a thing of beauty. My victory is bringing beauty into the world. Michael Naranjo, may your victories inspire many more. Support more victories for veterans. Go to DAV.org. It's Michael Naranjo. He's a uh, past uh, Outstanding Disabled American Veteran of the Year from late 90s, uh, Native American sculptor, uh, you know, obviously blinded by a, an enemy grenade in Vietnam, and just an incredibly inspirational uh, figure. Um, and these are the kind of results uh, that you get when you've got incredible creative, right? Uh, our, our donated media value uh, in 2023, our PSA campaign alone, $106 million in donated value. Uh, that is $106 million. I, I, I use this, this, and our accountants cringe when I, when I step behind a mic and say this, but uh, if, if the gold standard is the Super Bowl ad, uh, $7 million for 30 seconds, we got 15 seconds, or 15 Super Bowl ads worth of donated media value in 2023 alone. Uh, again, that is donated to uh, the organization free of charge. We, have, we didn't pay for that. We just made the creative, put it out there to download, Send it out to different stations in some cases. Again, many of you uh, out here in the audience or, or around the country now uh, take these, uh, these videos. They reach out to their, their local uh, stations, their local newspapers, and this is the kind of success uh, that we have. Uh, as of June 30th this year, I can report that we have 4.8 billion impressions uh, and 40, $45 million uh, in value. Uh, we've been on CBS, we're back on, on CBS, uh, the network, uh, we're on Cooking Channel, CNN, Discovery, Fox Business, Wall Street Journal. Uh, we, we get a report, I don't know, every couple of weeks it seems like someone sends us a, a snapshot of, of a Wall Street Journal, uh, a full page of Michael Naranjo or Naomi Mathis or Adam Alexander or Latoya Lucas, uh, and it's, uh, it's incredible, right? The Wall Street Journal to see these full page, it looks like, they look like ads. They look so much like ads that we get people who are, uh, you know, selling ads, reach out to us all the time, like, hey, you know, we'll run you a deal. I don't know how much you paid for that. And we always read back at we always tell them, hey, we paid nothing for that. Can you beat nothing? And uh, we usually don't hear back from them. But uh, it's, uh, it's, it's impressive, uh, and, and it continues uh, to perform well. 
Uh, again, some of you have seen these PSAs kind of out in the wild. If you, and uh, this one I, I, I love because I saw this on social media. Uh, I'm friends with Adam Alexander uh, from Oshkosh, Wisconsin, uh, shot by a sniper in Afghanistan. Uh, he's in our PSA, uh, our last round. And uh, his buddies saw him, uh, you hadn't talked to him in a while, and they saw him, you know, oh my God, there's Adam Alexander looking at me uh, in O'Hare Airport in Chicago. Uh, it's a massive airport. And uh, they sent, they snapped this picture, they tagged him. Of course, I'm his friend, so I get to see it too. And I, and I clipped it and shared it here. Uh, 10 years worth of PSAs. Uh, you can see that uh, 1.3 million airings on television alone, 79 billion impressions, 840 million, $849 million in donated value. Uh, again, that's all of this is powered by one thing, right? It's beautiful creative, it's, it's solid messaging, but it's really, it's your stories. That's right, that's what powers all of this. Uh, and uh, so we, we're, we're deeply thankful uh, to, to each of you because all of these, these folks who appear in these PSAs uh, that we share, it all started out as one thing. It started out as a magazine story or we met them at the Winter Sports Clinic that were brought to you by, it was brought to us by you. Uh, and again, you can see those numbers over the last uh, last, last 10 years. They're, they're very impressive. Um, but now we're going to talk about, uh, we're going to stop the back padding here on the PSAs and talk about the stuff that kind of keeps us worried. Uh, and this is, uh, this is a tough, this is, this is where the challenge lies for us. This is our battlefield. Uh, this is the time spent per day on digital versus traditional media. The black line, I don't know if you can really tell the colors there, but the black line that's going down, that's traditional media. That's CBS, NBC, ABC, Fox, you know, Fox, uh, the regular uh, broadcast channels, uh, it's going down. Uh, and it's, they, they crossed over, uh, digital took over in 2017 uh, and has been on the ascent ever since. Well, the donated value that we get from, from television, a lot of those airings come from CBS, ABC. So we now are tasked with the, the responsibility of making relationships with broadcast groups, with station owners. Again, I'm gonna talk about the ways that you can help us in this battle. We need it now more than ever. If we're gonna keep this, these Victories for Veterans PSAs uh, performing at this same level, uh, it's gotta be not, it, it's not gonna be the, the broadcasts, uh, the, the ABCs and the NBCs of the world that are gonna save us. It's gonna be the Sinclairs, it's gonna be the Hearsts, it's gonna be the smaller media groups, and it's gonna be the individual, uh, uh, individual stations in towns uh, across the country. And this is just another uh, piece of, of that changing landscape. Uh, in 1983, I think that there were, I think, what did I say, there were 50-something, uh, and we are down, you can see how low uh, we are now, we're down to six media companies in this country, six media com companies. Uh, we, you know, how do you even navigate that ecosystem? Well, you, you do things like you go to the National Association of Broadcasters and you do some things, you know, you work on developing individual relationships. You got guys like Dan Clare who, who spend a lot of time and invest a lot of energy in building relationships uh, at that higher level. And then we have, again, we're gonna talk about all of you uh, building a, these relationships at, at the local level. Uh, and these are just a couple of more uh, me media trends uh, from this year. Uh, again, it's all about streaming, right? This is what streaming is doing. Streaming, if it, Netflix, some of you have seen like uh, uh, Pluto and uh, a couple of these ad-based, um, uh, what's the other one, Tubi. Th these are free apps that show up uh, on, you know, on, your, on your digital television uh, that you're like, oh my gosh, look at all these movies I can watch for free. Well, you're not watching them for free, you're getting commercials again, right? And my wife makes this joke that she's gonna, uh, uh, she has this product that she's gonna sell where she puts Netflix and Amazon and, and Tubi and all these things all together and sells it as one package to people and she's gonna call it cable. Um, we're all, everyone, everyone brags about how we, uh, you know, disabled the cable all these years ago and uh, somehow it found a way back into our lives again. Uh, I think I'm paying for about eight different streaming services at least right now. Um, but, you know, so you have these, these ad-based, uh, you'll see DAV, uh, our PSA is on there from time to time, uh, but we have no idea, and they're, there's, they're under no obligation uh, from the FCC 
uh, to, to broadcast them, and we can't track them in the same way that we can track and, and, and tally up that donated value otherwise. So it's a, it's a challenge uh, right now. And of course, you see some things about gaming there, and, 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 and Kevin's all over that. And, but gaming actually is finding its way, streaming is finding its way back into the, uh, the ecosystem of, of television. Uh, you know, last couple of years, The Queen's Gambit uh, started out as a show, and now it's a game. Uh, and then you have The Last of Us that started out as a game, and now it's a, it was one of the biggest shows of 2023. So it's, uh, you know, the, the line between all these different kinds of media is, is blurring. Finding our place, finding our foothold there uh, is going to be a challenge uh, for us. Uh, and again, like that last bullet says, measurement. It's uh, finding ways to measure our success in this world is going to be tough. If you're not paying for it, if it's not fundraising, uh, paying for the placement of a, a, uh, of, a of a commercial, essentially, then it's there's no way really of tracking or tracking its success. So, what we need to be doing is building relationships, uh, building relationships with with channels, local channels, in your neighbor in your neighborhoods, in your cities, in your towns, in your states, uh, smaller media groups. Um, the, the greatest strength that we have uh, is you. Uh, you know, we have this, this wild crap stable that we're all throwing, throwing dice at right now in this media landscape, uh, and we have this capital uh, that e all of you have built up, you know, nationwide, uh, and it's what we have. It's the chips that we have to push forward, uh, and we need to be doing that now more than ever. Uh, you know, you guys have, you know, provide us with what I call IP, you know, it's intellectual property, uh, and our ability to establish local relationships. I know we're talking about you know, the, the ESPN, ABC, CBS's, and we're proud of the Wall Street Journal. It pales in comparison to what each of you could do if you really got active at the local level uh, and started, uh, you know, burning up the phones with your, 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 your uh, newspapers and stations. They're not selling ads. A lot of these people aren't, aren't, aren't able to sell ads. They have space for PSAs. They have a, 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 an obligation to run PSAs. Right? And if you're active, if you're active in your town, if you are actively asking, you know, putting, building those relationships, uh, it's, it's, you know, it will yield fruit, I guess. Uh, again, the, the, all these, the tools that we have are in the, the member resources section of DAV.org. Uh, you, you know, you can find it along with, with everything else. And I, I, I can't pass this slide without saying, uh, and hopefully Doug talks about it, or if he had his seminar already, he talked about it. Uh, every memo that this organization puts out uh, to our, our, our local leaders, our state and local leaders, uh, is then put in the member section, right out there in front uh, at DAV.org. Um, so I know that sometimes we've had people who have reported back to us like, I heard that Barry sent out a memo about this thing or that thing. I would have been really interested in hearing about it, but you know, it went into my spam folder, right? That happens. We get it, right? Spam folders, spam folders are rough and email deliverability is an issue. This every week, set a, a, a calendar uh, on your digital calendar to, to remind yourself to go and check that, you know, once a week, once every two weeks. Uh, maybe, maybe at the same time, see what we've shared on, on, on our Facebook channel and, and share it at your local, at the local level on that same calendar reminder. Um, if, you know, it's one of those things that if, if it gets measured, it, it gets managed. Um, this, uh, uh, back to local PSA pitching. Um, this might seem kind of boring unless you're an accountant and no disrespect to accountants. This is just a, a spreadsheet. Um, this is a spreadsheet that I emailed to Al LaBelle. There's Al sitting right down front. Guys, he wasn't in a fight with anyone. He lost a fight with a door, I think. Al, there's Al. Um, he uh, reached out uh, soon after the election of the new state commander uh, uh, in Wisconsin and said that, hey, uh, our commander has asked that we divide uh, the entire state up into a group of, of representatives, and we're going to pitch every media outlet in the state of Wisconsin. Uh, can you please provide me with who's running our PSAs right now? It was easy. I sent this over to them, and it's not over, not overwhelming, not not bad numbers, decent numbers. But this is actually should be good news to them because this gives them a ton of headspace to grow, a ton of headspace. Every state can be doing this. We, you reach out to me, I'll provide you with the exact same spreadsheet. It's, it's easy, it's an easy report for us to run. Uh, we would love to have every state dividing up with its, you know, its best outreach people, the guys who, who the Al LaBelles of, of Montana and, and uh, Washington and, and every other state, 
uh, and I'm, I'm singling out Al. I know there's a, a whole uh, group of them in, in Wisconsin who are just you know fantastic outreach advocates for our organization. Uh, having them out there um, take these these this list and see what's available, and quite frankly, thank the ones who are running our PSAs and making sure you're building relationships with them because they are running our PSAs. Uh, and, and talk to them about the transportation network issues you have, building those relationships like Dan was talking about earlier. This PSA toolkit, this is why I was getting into the, the membership section. This is, it's, it's available uh, at, 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 in the membership section at DAV.org. Uh, it includes PSA campaign info, how to access materials. I mean, you go to, to uh, DAVPSA.org, it's just that easy, and you can download every PSA whether it's the, the billboard, the television, radio, um, magazines, share that link directly with all your contacts, whoever you're, you're reaching out to. Again, this PSA toolkit is, is a goldmine of information. It really gives you all the steps that, that you need. If you're not comfortable doing it, you, know, you can go with a couple of friends. Um, set up a meeting. They will, they will take these meetings with you guys. I, I, I promise you that. Just like I, I'll, I'll promise you that they'll, they will uh, run stories from yours once you establish these relationships with them. Uh, we put uh, messaging, sample pitches uh, in there. And this is the last thing I want to talk to you guys about today. And it, again, it goes back to your stories. Uh, we do a pretty good job. Again, I mentioned that there's only 15 of us. We do a pretty good job of covering and reaching out and finding uh, the, the, you know, these great stories. I mean, you've seen some of them uh, here this week. You've seen them in the magazine. You see them in our videos, on social media. But really, we need you to be feeding them up to the us when you can. Uh, and one of the easiest ways uh, to do that is using mystory.dav.org. Uh, you might not think that, 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 your, that your story matters, or you might think that, I don't know that this would be a, a good, it would, wouldn't help them out at all, send it to us. We, there are, I can't tell you how many times uh, that, you know, a, as a writer, uh, we've had a writer who, who heard about this one thing from this one person two years ago, and finally, we find the right spot to fit it in. It, it's a piece, it's a missing piece of a puzzle. Uh, and from time to time, this, the, the mystory.dav.org, uh, it gets popular and we'll get a lot of stories, but then it will, it will hit a dry spell. I feel like we've been in a little bit of a dry spell lately. Uh, so we, please um, don't just share your stories with your local media. Think of us as your local media too. You know, reach out, reach out to us. Um, uh, so that, I, I, again, I appreciate uh, you doing so. It's, it's, it's important. Um, I, before I, I wrap up here, this is my last, pretty much my last slide. Uh, how many of you attended the Fallujah uh, event last night? And what'd you think? Good? Did, yeah, right, yeah. Uh, the, the gentleman most responsible uh, for making that happen uh, is sitting over here to my right, Brian Buckwalter. You saw him, if you were there, you saw him. He is, I, I mean, a smooth moderator. We had some tech issues with microphones. Uh, and man, uh, he, he hung in there and got it done. And the, it was just such a, a, an inspirational, uh, it was an incredibly uh, moving and touching event to see these, uh, these four, uh, three veterans and one journalist, Lucian Reed, uh, who had had this experience uh, together and separately. And, and we saw so much magic happen last night at that event. Um, and I saw, so I, I, Brian deserves, this, obviously, the lion's share of credit for this, but also, um, tomorrow's his birthday. Uh, so if I could, b before we wrap up here today, if I could get everyone to join me uh, in singing happy birthday to Brian, I'll take the lead on this, okay, ready? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Buck Walter. Happy birthday to you. Thank you so much.